In this video, I'll attempt to spend $100 on street food here in the country of Cambodia. As you can see, she has many different ingredients. First of all, have you ever seen an egg dessert in a pumpkin? But first, let's back up. Cambodia is a country in Southeast Asia. It's right next to Vietnam. How do I know? Because I drove here from Vietnam. Even though Cambodia is rapidly growing and modernizing, it is still a very inexpensive country, especially for visitors from the USA. Today, our main focus is Phnom Penh. This is the capital of this country and by far the most populated city with over 2 million people. That means a lot of food. Today, we have come here to the central market. Look at it from the sky. This place is massive and they have a little bit of everything for everybody, especially street food. Cambodian street food has a personality all its own and we're about to get to know her or him. It. We found our first location right here. This looks amazing. These are fried wheat noodles. Let's see how it works. It all starts with a heck ton of oil. From here, she pops an egg. Oh, egg gets a flip. We've got onion, green onion, bean sprout. She chats with her friend a little bit. She puts on some oyster sauce and invites some of these noodles in. More oil. It's already 500 calories of oil. Right here, she's got some very lean pieces of beef joining the party. Next, she hits it with some fish sauce. Look at this pile of goodness. She grabs a plate. On top of the plate, she mounds up this beautiful symphony of flavors and that is complete and we're smiling oh all right folks this is a great way to start the day this is a cambodian dish known as no cha right we've got beef we've got wheat noodles veggies glistening oil let's give it a shot oh yeah. it's hot it's greasy it's satisfying it's not that salty i think it does need a little bit of this chili jam all right that's probably too much but then we have this fish sauce this is like chili garlic is that enough i think so let's give it another try i ruined it no these noodles are so dense and so fun to chew through and now we've got all the flavor to go with it it's very spicy it's sweet you've got some crazy deep umami savoriness from that fish sauce right here we got to break this egg apart this is like a next level noodle. Let's talk about the price. Our goal today is to spend $100 on street food. This cost here $2.50. So we are two and a half percent closer to our goal. We have a long way to go. Let's keep moving. Just straighten up your back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like that. All right, guys, we're trying to hit $100. I found a place to make it happen. This is Sadei Peng, right? All right, nailed it. And here she is selling all different types of seafood, squid, giant river prawns with long arms. Now let's talk about this section. This is already prepared seafood. Here we have snails. We have other snails out of the shell. These are blood cockles. These are the tiniest lobsters you've ever seen. I Hold on. It must be a translation issue. These are not lobsters. And then here we have some blue crabs, which have turned orange. And finally, something called squid teeth. I'll tell you what these are soon. Could I have one of these and one of these? Oh, get out. She said leave. Okay, sorry. Now let's see how she whips this up. Right here, she scoops up a load of snails in the wok. She puts her proprietary blend of oil and seasoning onto the snail. Sweet basil gets chopped in next. And then she says, wait, I need some more of my magic sauce. Snails are almost finished. And wow, the smells coming off here are amazing. Time to eat. Akun. All right, folks, round two. And we are really padding our budget here. This is expensive. This is seafood. In a moment, I'm going to show you what a squid tooth is. But first, snails. You gotta be, you got, you know what? F this. Get a spoon. You need the right tool for the job. I got a beautiful bite right here. Try it out. That's so good. It's nice and chewy, but then the flavor, it is like a profound aromatic amount of lemongrass, herbs. It's spicy, it's super sweet, it's super savory. It's everything at one time. My American brothers and sisters. You know they say happiness is on the other side of fear. Deliciousness is on the other side of a snail. Hashtag inspired by Sunny. Let's get it trending, folks. Let's move on to our next course. The squid teeth. That's a large order. My gosh. And that gets put into the wok. She hits it with a load of this secret seasoning blend. Then she puts in some greens and cilantro. The balls get a little bit of a stir. She feels satisfied with that amount of cooking. And she scoops these right onto our nice green foundation. Recently, I was in Chile and I was showing you a squid that had a big beak. This is the muscle that powers the beak. It kind of looks like a mushroom. Cheers. It's so good. It's very dense, almost like an abalone. And this sauce that she's put on here, this oily combination of probably oil, seasonings, spices, lemongrass, all of it comes together to create an amazing seafood blend. So that is our seafood course. Oh, 
Uh-oh, satanic. So that is our seafood course. We are well on our way to $100. I think today is finally gonna be the day that we achieve that goal. Let's keep moving. All right, folks, they have so many delicious offerings. First of all, you all may know durian, but you've never seen durian this size. Take a look at the plant right here, and then look above at these durian pods. They are freaking massive. If you don't know durian, it is a fruit with a smell so pungent. There will be signs in hotels saying, hey, no uninvited guests and no durian. They're both very problematic. Ah, right, take a look at this. We, huh, I don't, this is a unique offering at this market that you won't really find at your Whole Foods. We have crickets, we have water bugs, we have silkworms, and we have giant tarantulas. It's been fried and seasoned. It looks gnarly. I touched this, I think I should need to buy it. We can come towards our budget, but suddenly you have to eat it. Awesome. All right, folks, we have come to our next meal location. This place is very unique because they are serving mystery meats on a stick. When you want to eat one, you just take it out. Here's my commitment. I don't know what any of these are, but whatever I pull out, I'm absolutely going to eat it. Is it going to be good? That's not the point. We're having fun. All right. Aha, I pulled this out just now. It's pancreas. Right here, we have a soy bean sauce with some chili jam. Flavor is good. Oh, and then at the end, it's weird. So it's like this membrane on the outside making it keep its shape, but in the inside, it's really gooey. And wow, this sauce is amazing. Let's find another one. Here we go. Oh, pork intestine. Wow, it's very rubbery. Flavor, pretty good. The taste of this Chinese five spice and like a little bit of funkiness from this pig. Next skewer. Oh, yes, this is a beef ball. Let's hit it with a little bit of dip. And for me personally, I like to go two balls at once, but you do whatever suits you. It's a good beef ball. Okay, I'm going for one more. I just want to cheat. I want the ear. Ah, okay. All right. I'm randomly going to grab one more. Closing my eyes, moving my hand. I can't see anything. Oh, cool. It's the ear of a pig. Mm. The cartilage is really crunchy, but the protein in the skin, it's very gelatinous. That's pretty good. For four of these mystery meats, I only spent $2 just now. But I got to say, for that $2, I got a lot of entertainment. Wow, take a look at this. Here's like a half a pig. This gentleman just offered me some. Oh, he meant, oh, I thought like a free taste test. He meant, do you want to buy some? Taking the cleaver to it, and he's cubing it up. Throw it all in this styrofoam box. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I've been scammed, except for I didn't spend any money. He said, do you want to try some? And I was thinking, a bite. And then he cut all this up. And then I said, how much? And then he said, just try it. I gotta say, it does look good. Delicious, well marinated, salty and sweet. Take a look at that crispy, crackling skin. It's good, but better with smaller bites. Thank you for a taste of your pig. Yeah. How much does this cost? Probably like five dollars. But it's okay. It's for free. No. What kind of scam is this? Where I don't pay any money, but I get meat. Sir, I've changed my mind. I want to buy that right there. Okay. Thank you. So as you guys saw, you had to be careful in Cambodia. That guy tried to scam me by giving me free pork, so I scammed him back by buying $35 worth of pork product. Let's go give it away. All right, there's a bunch of drivers out here who look like they might want to eat some pork. Uh, jo, jo, jet, oh. hmm? what, what? Here we go. <laughs> it's pork. Okay. Enjoy. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our next food location. This is Mi Sun. She's a noodle maker, and did you know Cambodia is the shortest country in the world? One example right here. Today we're gonna eat something called bangsurun. The pronunciation is terrible. Don't spell it phonetically. I don't know what I'm saying. It all starts with a bowl. Gets a little bit of bean sprouts. And some herbs. Then we have these white noodles. This looks like a rice noodle. She takes a spring roll. She chops it into the bowl. From here, she takes some pork sausage. She's scooping in fried pork, a little bit of fish sauce, and then she hits it with some coconut cream. And then right here, we have some crushed peanuts. Wow, it's a little bit of dinner and breakfast at the same time. And happy, we're happy. On Vietnam, coconut cream is usually really sweet, but I'm told this is not a sweet coconut cream, it's just very rich. They said I should put some of the chili in there, give it a little bit of heat. All right, let's give it a shot. It is a nice bouncy rice noodle. Most of the flavor is coming from that fish sauce, and the fish sauce is a pretty diluted, not too sweet or salty. Right here, we have a little bit of that spring roll. It's got a little bit of a crunch, some minced meat on the inside. I think the trick here is to try to get everything in one bite. Oh, there we go. Nope. Ah, uh -huh, yes. 
I'm going home. The herbs offer a little bit of freshness. Overall, it's a pleasant noodle, but I do think I prefer the Cambodian noodles that have some broth. For this whole bowl right here, it costs only $2. That's cheap. I came here today setting out on a mission to spend $100 on street food. Right now, we are over half that goal. I'm gonna keep going and see if I can get the full 100. Let's move. You've heard of shrimp crackers, right? These are taking shrimp crackers to the next level. Right here, she has a load of a shrimp batter. And then right here, you can see she's frying it in this little bitty wok. And then as they finish, she puts them right here. And these are super affordable. It just happens to not be my absolute favorite pastry in the world. But the price, you cannot beat. Only 75 cents. And it looks like you're paying about one cent per shrimp because there are a load of shrimp on top of those. Oh, wow. Guys, I stumbled upon something amazing. Now, this is a classic Cambodian dessert. Let's see how it's made. So she starts with this. This looks like a tortilla, but it is made from flattened sticky rice. Then she puts on some yellow sticky rice, then some black sticky rice, some crushed sesame seeds, then a little bit of sugar, then a huge amount of that shredded cocoa that goes on top, and she rolls it up. Okay, Akun, I love this. These are like old school, thousand year old traditional desserts. Cheers. It's a Cambodian dessert burrito. Even the wrapper on the outside is a bit chewy. And then as you go inside, two different types of chewy, sticky rice. You got a different texture coming from the coconut. And then almost all the flavor is from the sweetness of the sugar and the crushed up sesame seeds. That's my camera guy laugh when I do this. If you don't crush the sesame seeds, then you don't have anything to put in your dessert. Big winner right here. By the way, one of these, 70 cents. A great deal, but it's not really helping us get to $100. All right, we're taking a break from the meat and trying out some of these traditional Cambodian desserts. This looks nice on the outside, but I'm told it's full of squeezed cucumber and carrot. Oh, I don't know if that's even a dessert. It's just fried bread and there are some vegetables in there. What in the heck? They have some kind of a starchy root vegetable inside. This is a wild combination. Additionally, they have waffles inside are filled with strands of coconut. But let me tell you my absolute favorite thing they have here. It is this. This is a traditional dessert. It looks like a little sombrero, but way more delicious. So they have a rice flour batter. They put that in the oil and then the middle is cushiony and then the outside edges are nice and fried up and crispy. A little bit of sweet sugary syrup on top but that my friend is dangerous because they are small and they look innocent but i could eat about 20 of these so how much does it cost for one only 25 cents that's why i am getting 12. let's add three dollars to the total all right, here we stumbled upon something very cool, a honey dealer. Now, you know the honey is good if it's not shaped like a bear, but rather it's in a water bottle like this. That is some real orange honey. And beyond that, the color between the, no, that's oil. The color between the honeys is not quite the same. That's how you know it's not from a factory. Here, she has actual honey comb. Some of this, like this piece, does have honey, but most of this is not true honeycomb. In fact, you can see these are honey bee larvae that are developing, plus the wax, not really any honey. This is not gonna be sweet. They could eat it like this or they could boil it. It's an interesting way to get your protein for the day. Right now we are in the seafood section of the market. And anytime you're in Asia and you go to a seafood market, look deeply at what they have there and you might find something like this. This is a horseshoe crab. It's got like 10 of these nasty legs and each leg is like a claw. Bro, what do you need all these claws for? You might be looking at this and wondering, what do you eat? Well, you don't eat the shell, you don't eat the legs. What you eat is hidden inside here. Under here is a very thick leathery layer. Once you cut and remove that, you'll find a ton of eggs inside. The eggs taste very much like burnt rubber. It's a unique thing, but it's a thing they also tell you not to eat because people are using these for some kind of research. Tough call. Research or a weird dinner? Only you can decide. All right, guys, I started today saying that Cambodia has a completely unique culinary identity all its own. And they also have banh mi. But these are Cambodian banh mi. They don't even call it banh mi. They have their own word. That word is, what's this? Banh sak ko an. The bunk, it's a lot, way more words and slightly more difficult to say. Here's what I'm doing next. I would never compare two different foods from two different countries. Psych, I will. This is a little bitty grill that she's using to cook up all this delicious meat. I'm gonna go balls. She takes the bread, she slices it open, and then she puts on some Cambodian mayonnaise. Oh yes. And then she toasts up the bread back here. She's getting some pickled papaya with some chili on top. She hands this to a certain random person on my team. What, what's happening? She's giving the food to people on my team. She doesn't make the sandwich? No. I mean, when you go to Subway, they don't 
don't just hand you some deli meat and a container of mayo and say good luck. It's like a choose your own adventure with this sandwich. Of course, we have the bread right here. Open it up. Now that is a load of papaya salad. I'm gonna just take about a third of that and drop that in. The next step is inserting my meat. Put the whole thing inside, close it up, and pull out the toothpick. Boom, there we have it. A magnificent banh mi creation. This mayo is filled with sugar, but I like it. The bread I find to be a little bit over toasted. I think that's, you know, if you're doing that, that's probably too much toasting. The meat is just gushing oily goodness outside of it. And it's a great blend between heavy meat and then this nice acidic crunchy papaya salad. Now the big question is, is it better than a Vietnamese banh mi? I will not. I, I'm not, um, it had, you know what? It's too different to compare. Let's talk about the price. If I'm gonna get to $100, I'm hoping this banh mi costs 30 to $35. The price is, $1.25. Oh, it's, I don't know if we're gonna get to 100, but I have one more food left in mind. Let's go there and see what happens. All right, folks, we have come to our final location because after this, I cannot fit one more thing inside of me, anywhere, in any orifice. Sorry, here we have a little piece of history. Hello, nice to see you again. This woman was in my video when I came to this central market seven years ago, when I was just a little baby Sunny with a crappy show that nobody watched. That's her from the video. Last time I was here, she was introducing me to this. This is a palm fruit. Now she has... I am so sorry. As you can see, she has many different ingredients and all of them can turn into a dessert. First of all, have you ever seen an egg dessert in a pumpkin? Good. It tastes a little bit like a custard. Next, I want to talk about this right here. Even though they're all different shapes, they're all made from a combination of chicken and duck egg mixed with sugar. So I just want to try these two because they look so delicious and bright. From here, she puts in the coconut cream, then a load of ice and some syrup on top of that. Oh, condensed milk and a little bit of jackfruit on top. Wow, guys, this is a dessert for the ages. She has created an impenetrable layer of ice. So I will just try to eat ice with condensed milk and see if I enjoy it. Oh, the ice is not the best part. But when you mix the condensed milk with palm sugar, it tastes like you just finished a bowl of cereal and you drank the sweet milk. I like that. But let's dig down a little bit further. I want to get to this eggy thing. Mm. It's super sweet, very creamy. We also have this. It looks like little balls of noodles. Mm. So the ice has kind of made it harden. It's become a more dense texture. It's really good. And it's the perfect way to end your day. So from here, I am done eating, but we're not done with this video because I need to add up everything I ate today and see if we were able to spend over $100 here in Cambodia. Ladies and gentlemen, today we spent the entire day here at Central Market. I thought we would have to go around the city to find more street food, but they have all of it here. But the main question you're wondering is to know whether or not we spent $100 because that was our goal after all. Well, after adding it all up, after even somewhat cheating and buying a big piece of pork shoulder to give to a cyclo driver and his friends. Did we spend more than $100? The answer may surprise you. It's no. I feel bad. I've struck out quite a few times now. And I don't want people to think the $100 challenge is some gimmick I do to make people watch a video, because that's what it is. I don't want them to think that, though. So I promise you sometime in the next two or $300 challenges, I will absolutely spend more than $100, just so that there's some actual mystery when I take on these challenges. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.